the next thing you can do to help make a difference in the whole climate change situation is conserve water. So the lowest lying fruit within this whole um, idea is low flow toilets, low flow showers, low flow faucets. The low flow, low flow faucets are not gonna necessarily reduce the amount of water you use to wash dishes. Um, but um, you know, if you're washing your hands, something that requires real time flow, having a low flow faucet will allow you to clean your hands with less water. Same with the showers, you can use a lot less water to get clean um, than if you have a high flow faucet. You know, there's some houses now that are getting built with five, six, seven, ten faucets, uh, or ten shower heads, I should say. And, you know, first of all, they use an enormous amount of hot water in order to, um, you know, run the ten faucets. Um, but they also just generally waste a lot of water. So you don't need a lot of water to, to stay clean. A shower can still feel pretty luxurious with a, a low flow shower head if you get a, a decent one. Um, the reason to save water, we kind of hit on in the last one, but water takes an enormous amount of energy to get it to you, both in the, in the cleaning of it, if it needs cleaning, but also in the pumping of the water. Um, as I said in the last video, cities can consume up to 30% of their energy just getting water to, um, to, to the houses in the city, to the businesses, all of that stuff. And so water itself um, or energy that it takes to push that water takes a lot of um, energy to, to produce which, which which itself creates GHGs but also the energy itself if, it, if the energy is derived from natural gas or coal takes water in order to produce the energy so there's embodied water and energy due to the condensation process required for a lot of these thermal energy plants now that's kind of the first level of water conservation. The next level of water conservation, if it's allowed within your jurisdiction, is to use a composting toilet. Toilets generally in a house will use anywhere from 20 to 30 percent of all the water in the house. Um, and not only is a composting toilet going to save a whole bunch of water, um, a conversation that a lot of people don't really want to have about human excrement is that um, there's an enormous amount of nutrient in it. You know, we're all basically expecting our food to come from farms from far away, sometimes in Canada, as far away as California. And they're basically growing that food in soil, and th that food is pulling nutrient out of that soil, then being shipped to us, and then that nutrient gets sent to a sewage treatment plant and lost forever, pretty much. Whereas with a composting toilet, we can actually keep those nutrients in cycle uh, for very long periods of time. So. Uh, composting toilets both save in water, but they also save nutrient and keep it in the system, which will improve your soil um, and generally improve the uh, nutrient density of the plants. And composting toilets is a whole other video that we can talk about. Some jurisdictions actually allow gray water as well. That's another great way to keep water in play. It's not necessarily going to save water in the house but gray water itself can save um, irrigation water in the landscape. Now there are some gray water uh, products out there, specifically the Brack gray water system. I'm totally not a fan of that. Uh, what it does basically is harvest all the gray water from showers and baths, sometimes maybe even from your washing machine. It filters it, chlorinates it, and then sends it to your toilet tank. The reason I'm not a fan of it is that the Brack water system requires you to um, change the filter out so that's going to have human hair greases oils other particulate in there which are going to be rotting so it's kind of gross um, you're going to have essentially a bit of a cesspool there so pathogens are going to collect there they're going to have a perfect environment to grow which then creates a pathogen vector for the people that are having to change it number two it requires you to put chlorine into the system on a regular basis and if you forget to chlorinate that tank then the collection tank that is the BRAC system, you can look this up on Google, B-R-A-C, BRAC gray water, um, that water will then go septic and now you're pumping septic effluent up into the toilet tank of your house, which is then going to ruin your toilet. So I don't like BRAC systems. If you've been told to put one in, I recommend you don't do it. If you do live in a place like British Columbia where gray water is totally legit, landscape gray water use, I highly recommend you check out the legislation and learn about how to do it. A colleague of mine, Gord Baird, who runs EcoSense, I'll put his link in the link below, specializes in gray water in BC. He's a great guy to contact. Um, and I know he's writing a book right now on it. So I'm really excited to see what comes out of that. Anyways, um, 
If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. Make sure you hit the like button. It helps to get the video to track. And if you want to find out more about this type of information, go over to Verge Permaculture and uh, check out our website at vergepermaculture.ca. We also have a free introduction to permaculture course that you can sign up for. And I'll put the link in the show notes below. And there'll also be a link to it at the end of this video. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for the next tip on what you can do about climate change.